Suppose we've got two candidates, let's call them X and Y, in an election. We have a number of polls, let's say with a similar polling method, that puts support for candidate X at around 50% or slightly below. They're all fairly consistent. But then we've got a poll from a very different company suggesting that support for X is at 62%. Is it possible that all the polls are unbiased and that the 62% is just an outlier, it just happened by chance? Or is there some causal explanation for the differences in these polls? In this video, I'm gonna present a causal Bayesian model which enables us to reconcile such differences taking account of potential biases in the polls. Now, first of all, let's recap the standard Bayesian model for learning the true percentage of support for candidate X from the polling data. So we start by assuming that this true percentage could be anything between 0 and 100 and that any value is equally likely. And that's what we call a uniform distribution over the range 0 to 100. And when we plot that as a probability distribution, you can see that it's got this equal probability from 0 to 100. Then assume that the sample is genuinely representative of the population and that all of those people sampled are independent of each other, then given a sample of size n, the number of people who say they support candidate x is just a binomial distribution where the number of trials is n and the probability of success is p divided by 100 where p is that true percentage of people in the population who support x. So for example, if the sample size is let's say 100 and the number who support candidate X in that sample is 62, then when we run the model, we get an updated posterior probability distribution for the true percentage for candidate X, which has a mean just under 62 because we started with a prior of 0.5, so that's why it takes more data to shift it to the sample mean. But you can see that it's quite a wide distribution because the 95% confidence interval here goes from about 52% to 71%. Whereas if, for example, the sample size was 1,000 and the number for candidate X in that sample was 620, and when we run the model, we see a narrower distribution here where it now is very close to 62% and the 95% confidence interval lies between about 59 and 65 and if we go to a very large sample size of 10,000 and we get 6,200 here, run the model, you can see now that this is almost exactly 62% and the confidence interval goes from just over 61 to just under 63%. There's still a bit of uncertainty, but not a great deal of uncertainty there. Now, to handle the issue of reconciling very different poll results, we've got to incorporate the notion of bias as a causal explanation. The bias factor ranges from 0 to 1. Values greater than 0 0.5 represent bias in favour of X, for example, where the poll oversamples the demographic more likely to vote X, and values less than 0 0.5 represent bias in favour of Y. Values of 0 0.5 means there's no bias. So let's check this out in the case when the bias factor is 0.5. We should then get exactly the same results as before. So for example, when we've got a poll size of 100 and 62% of them support X, and you see we get the same result as before where the true percentage and the bias percentage are identical. However, if there's, let's say, a 10% bias in favour of candidate X, then the value we want to put in here is 0.55, that's 10% above there. And what happens in that case, you can see the bias for X in here now. The bias percentage stays the same, but the true percentage now is lower. Instead of 62, it's now 56. So. And similarly, if there's a bias in favour of Y, similar amount, say a 10% bias or so in favour of Y, then the biased percentage, again, that stays the same, but the true percentage for X is now higher. It's more like 68, 69. Now we're going to move to a model where we've effectively put three of those models together to model the situation where we've got three poles. Two poles, which are assumed to use the same method, therefore if there's any bias, it will be common to them. And a contradictory pole, 
which if there's any bias, it's not necessarily the same bias as in these poles. These are just copies of the same single model I showed before. I'm just not showing some of the hidden nodes here that are irrelevant, but you can see that all of them are trying to learn the same common true percentage for Canada X. So first of all, let's assume that they've all got a similar typical sample size of a thousand people. Let's assume that there isn't any bias, neither in those two poles nor in this poll. So let's now observe 50% for X in that poll and let's say 49% for X in this poll. And we'll run the model and see what it learns about the true percentage candidate. And what it's learned is, as you'd expect, that the average here is 49.5. The 95% confidence interval is from 47.3 to 51.7. So that means there's a 95% probability that the true percentage for X lies between 47.3 and 51.7. But now we can use this model to give an explicit answer to the question, what's the probability under these circumstances that this different poll would result in at least 62% of the people asked expressing support for candidate X. And all we've done here is we've added this, what is that a Boolean node, which is simply true if that value is greater than or equal to 62. So let's look at this value here. And what you can see is that the probability that the percentage poll is at least 62 is 0.00004%. And that's equivalent to a one in 2.5 million chance. So this really isn't a feasible outlier. No, it's possible that maybe they asked a slightly different question, but of course the most likely causal explanation are the different biases in the polls. So for example, as we've seen, if there's a bias here of underestimating potential X supporters in these polls, then you'd get lower than the true value here. And if it was overestimating, you'd get higher than the true value here. So the key thing is now there does seem to suggest there's bias. So let's remove our assumption about no bias and we'll try and learn the bias. But the difference now is that we're not making any assumptions about the bias, but we actually observe 62% for this poll. We run the model and you can see that the true percentage has shifted to the right to take account of this new contradictory result, but the problem distribution is wider, so we're more uncertain. So in fact, it's now suggesting there's a mean of about 56, but the 95% confidence interval is now quite wide. It goes from 51 to 61.7. But the key thing is, look at what it's learned about the bias. It's convinced that this poll and these two polls are biased. In fact, it's saying there's a, about a 91% probability that the contradictory poll is biased in favor of X. But there's an even higher probability, 97.2%, that these polls are biased in favor of Y. Now, the reason there's a higher probability that polls one and two are biased than the contradictory poll is because we assume that these polls suffer from the same common bias. But what if we know that the conflicting poll is unbiased and still know nothing about any potential bias in polls one and two? Then in this case, when we run the model, we're now almost certain there's bias in these polls. And the true percentage learned has shifted much closer to the 62 here. It has a mean of 60.5 and a 95% confidence interval of 57.5 to 63.5. So even if we've got no evidence about this, these polls, but have evidence that this one has got a very good unbiased method, then it effectively discounts these polls, assuming that they're the ones that must be unreliable, biased. Now, the nice thing about this model is that it can also be used to take account of any known biases. So for example, if it was known that polls one and two systematically oversampled likely supporters of Y, but only by a small amount, say 4%, then that's essentially the equivalent of a bias factor of 0.48. And we run it again in this case, then you can see it shifted significantly back. So there's still bias, but we know roughly what the bias is. And in this case, you can see that the updated probability distribution for the true percentage for Canada X is about 55%, and the 95% confidence interval was 53, 57, which would suggest that this is a bit of an outlier, given that it's unbiased.